So in terms of the Google Inverter setup, what I will focus is the installation of an ET and a BT three phase um, high voltage inverter, um, and which is also the same type of installation for the high voltage single phase um, EH inverter. So I'm very, very sorry that we have different names for every inverter and it's a bit confusing. Um, but after a while of getting used to the products, then you start understanding and you, you learn it off by heart. So what I will do now is take you through the, the setup of the high voltage hybrid inverters that we have in our range to a BYD um, premium battery box, regardless of whether it's a HBS or a um, HVM, they have the similar type of setup. So one thing that is very important to install correctly is the smart meter. So the smart meter is one of the major areas where problems arise. Um, but we try to make this as easy as possible for you. The inverters do are pre-wired with a cable that is connected already inside the inverter. So we have a meter cable that is connected to the meter port of the inverter already pre-wired. So all you have to do simply is connect that cable into the RJ45 adapter, which is already pre-wired into the smart meter. So simply connect it into that cable and your communication is completed. If you need to, um, if you, I think the length of this cable is, if, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's three meters. Um, if you need a longer cable, then you can connect the fiber at 10 meter cable. Um, all you have to simply do is maybe you can use a, an adapter, um, an adapter in the middle and then extend it, or you can disconnect the cable from the inverter by just uh, unscrewing these cables and then connecting a new cable into the RJ45 port, which is inside the inverter and then connecting it into the smart meter. Um, so, but basically just the standard ethernet cable, LAN cable, straight through cable, um, will work with um, the, this connection between the inverter and the smart meter. So moving on from the connection of the smart meter, what is very important is the placement of the smart meter. So the smart meters are connected to CTs. So the CTs are also pre-wired um, onto the smart meter. So if you have a GM1000, you will only have one CT. If you have a GM3000, it will be connected with three CTs. So the reason why it's in the, the location is important is because the CTs are measuring the electricity which is coming into the house and which is coming out of the house. So this information is used by the inverter to determine how much power the battery can should be discharging into the loads or how much um, power it can be using from the PV array to charge. Um, and it's also used to for the export control. So if your grid operator says you're not allowed to export any bat, um, type of any electricity back into the grid, then by having the CTs at the, at the, um, at the point of connection, this allows the inverter to regulate its power to ensure that you are not exporting any electricity into the grid. So <clears throat> what we recommend is that the CTs be installed directly after the main revenue meter or the main customer meter or the, the meter that is being used by the retailer to charge the, um, the owner. So or the owner of the home or, or the, um, the occupant of the home. So we do not reckon, we do not want you to install the CTs at the output of the inverter. We do not want you to install the CTs at directly measuring the loads. So not here and not there. So this is not what we do want. This is not what we want to measure. What we want to measure is the import and export. So directly after the main meter, this is what's going in and that's what's coming out. So the power of the inverter will be split up, will um, we'll go into the loads first. So, and then any excess power will then be sent to the grid. And this is what we want to be measuring um, the CT. So we want to be measuring the net power after um, any power has been gone uh, into the loads. So if you install it 
typically after the main switch, um, sh everything should be okay and everyone is happy. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if for the first time you install our inverters that you get this bit wrong, but that's okay. Um, after a while, it will be just like riding a bike and you'll, you'll be understanding and you'll know exactly how to install the CTs. So with each CT that we supply, on the label of the CT, we have on one side um, the label CTA uh, for, for a single phase supply. Um, and then also on the bottom, which is very important, is an arrow. So this is showing you in which direction the CT should be installed. So the CT should be installed facing or the arrow should be facing towards the grid. So um, what the CT is measuring, I think the um, measuring the electron, the, the magnetic field of the current, and then it's converting that into a uh, into a current reading, which is then sent to the inverter. So we want to ensure that we're measuring the right the the current in the right direction. So make sure that this arrow is pointing to the grid. If you are using a GM3000, um, again, each, the GM3000 will be connected to three CTs and each CT will have its own label, CTA, CTV, and CTC. So just make sure that the CTs are clamped around the right phases. Um, on the left-hand side is what you can see on, um, on the other side of the CT when you've uh, turned it around. So. We've tried to make it as easy as possible for you so that you don't install it incorrectly. So again, arrow must be pointing towards the grid. Um, the one thing um, that installers sometimes uh, mistakenly interpret is that L means loads. So in our system, L does not mean loads. Um, so what we do mean is that the arrow should be well, we, we, we mean at L is actually the grid. So that's why we say, make sure that the arrow is pointing towards the grid side. So do not have the arrow pointing towards the inverter. Otherwise uh, we'll be measuring um, the negative or uh, the negative value of the, of the current, for example. So very important. I keep stressing this point because it is one of the places where um, problems arise. So, so here again, um, this is just showing you how the CTs are pre-wired. The first two terminals on the GM3000 is the communication cable. So RS485B minus and RS485 plus. This you shouldn't need to disconnect. It's already pre-wired and then connected into the RJ45 uh, port of the inverter. Um, what is important to note also is that the phases on the top of the of the GM3000 is labeled in reverse. So we label them in terms of CTC, CTB, and CTA. So from left to right, we have phase C connected as the first, C, um, phase B connected as the second, and then phase A is connected at the end. So this is important to understand because on the bottom of our inverter, um, we label them in the opposite way. So the phases are ordered from left to right, A, B, C in alphabetical order. So not only do you have to clamp the CTs around the phase cables, what you also need to do is connect the voltage sense cables, which are connected to the bottom terminal row of the smart meter. So you need to ensure that the voltage sense cable of terminal A is connected to the same cable that CTA is measuring and the same for CTB. Um, and voltage sense B and same for voltage sense C and CTC. Because what we're doing with this system is we're measuring or we're trying to calculate the power that is going through this cable. So the CTs are measuring the current, these voltage sense cables are measuring the voltage and when you multiply them, we get the power. So if we're measuring the, vol if we're measuring the voltage of 
of C, and we're multiplying that by the current of A. Um, we're actually measuring the wrong power, and we're going to have um, instable operation of the inverter. So you might see the inverter doing some crazy things when it should, when you know it should be doing something else. So it's very important to ensure that you have the the voltage or the power cables here connected to the correct phases. Uh, in terms of uh, an isolation point for the smart meter, we do recommend that you install um, uh, a half an amp circuit breaker or a half amp HRC fuse, high ruptured current fuse as a point of isolation uh, for the smart meter as well. So if it's a GM1000, you just need a one fuse or a single phase circuit breaker. But if it's a GM3000, then you would need a three phase uh, circuit breaker or three individual fuses. Um, once you connect the smart meter, and when you've turned on when you've uh, turned on the fuses or you turned on the um, circuit breaker, what you will see on the smart meter is a series of LEDs which will start lighting or will start illuminating. So the top LED is the uh, is the power LED, and that's orange. So if you have power to the smart meter by the virtue of the voltage center cables which is connected, then the top LED or the orange LED will be solid on. So that means that the smart meter is on. The second LED or the middle LED is a blue LED and that's signifying the energy flow. So if the middle LED is solid, that means that the system or the house is consuming power from the grid. If it's blinking, that means it's exporting back to the grid. So this is why it is important that the CTs are installed in the correct location and they're installed in the right direction to ensure that we're measuring the right flow of energy going in and out of the house. The bottom LED is an, also an orange LED, which just uh, signifies the communication status. And if it's blinking, that means it's transmitting data from the smart meter to the inverter. Um, if it's blinks, if it blinks five times, that means you've most likely pressed the reset button, which you may have to do when you're troubleshooting the system itself. Um, so one tip that we do have um, is the blue LED is very important. Well, I find it very important and very handy to observe um, because this gives you a really quick indication of whether you've um, install the smart meter and the CTs correctly. So for example, if you know, if you've turned on a kettle or the stove and you know that the system should be taking power from the grid, then that means that the middle LED should be solid on, which means consuming. But if you see it, if, if it's showing you that it's exporting, then that indicates to you that the CTs may be in the wrong location or the CTs are in the wrong direction. So this gives you a really nice, um, nice clue on how, um, on whether you've installed the CTs correctly. So that can be a lifesaver when um, you're troubleshooting the PV system itself. <laughs> 